Fair fire on a sonsy face. Great chieftain of the pun race. Aboon them all you tack your place. Pinch, tripe, or theorem. Will all you what they owe grace as langs my earum. Your groan and trencher there you fill. Your hud days like a distant hill. Your pin would help to mend a mill in time of need. Whilst through your paws the dews distill. Like amber beet. This knife see rustic labour dyke. I cut ye up a ready slight. Trenching your gushing entrails bright like any ditch. And then, och, with a glorious sight. Wherem, or eken, rich. Then horn for horn, they stretch and strive. They'll tack the hindmost and on they arrive. they all the way swallowed kites belive, they're bent like drums. Then all gidmen like to arrive. Oh, be thank of tums. Is there our his French ragout? Or all the yard star sue? Or fricassee would make her spew a perfect scunner? Looks doon with sneer from scorn for view. On sick of dinner? Poor devil, see him out his trash. As feckless as a withered rash. His spindle shank, a kid whiplash, his knee even it. Through bloody flood, off will to dash. Ach, how unfit. But mark the rustic haggis fed. The trembling earth resumes his tread. Clapping his wally neva blade, he'll make it whistle. And legs and arms and heeds all sned. Like taps a thistle. Your powers will make mankind your care. And dish them out the buffet. All Scotland wants nae skinking wear that jowps or luggies. But if you wish her great for prayer, gear a haggis. Oof, well, that was quite intense. <laughs> Did you get all that? So that was Address to the Haggis by Scotland's national poet, Robert Burns, or Rabbi Burns, the plowman poet. Now, for all intents and purposes, the words I'd spoken were actually in English, but they were in an 18th century Scottish dialect, so don't worry if you didn't get a thing. <laughs> On the 25th of January, every year all around the world, Burns is immortalized by having what is called a Burns supper or a Burns night. And it's not just for the Scots or the Scottish diaspora, it's for anybody who enjoys a good night out. No other uh, writer or poet has a national celebration or an annual feast held in their honor. I was 15 years old when I went to my first burn supper, and I went along to my local rugby club, where there was a referee, and a, a shockingly bad referee, I might add, he recited a poem called Tam O'Shanta. This is a tale of a man who's had a few too many beers down the pub, and he jumps on a horse, and he's chased home by witches and warlocks. And I remember just sitting there mesmerized as he gesticulated and acted out over 15 minutes worth of poem in an old Scottish dialect that practically no one in the room fully understood. But somehow, those words had meaning. And I had a newfound respect for that referee as he took me on a journey with Tam O'Shanta that I'll never forget. He illuminated something inside my brain that I didn't know existed until that very moment. Since that day, I've been to many more burn suppers, and I've held my own in several countries all around the world. And today, I wanted to give you a brief introduction into what happens during the evening. So the evening itself revolves around food. And aside from the amounts of whiskey being consumed, the undoubted star of the evening is the haggis. This is my haggis. It was from a can. I'm a classy guy. <laughs> For those of you who have never tried the delight that is haggis, I would suggest that you don't Google or ask questions about its ingredients. <laughs> and then once you've decided you love it, I would also suggest you don't Google or ask questions about its ingredients. <laughs> Just enjoy. So during the evening, um, the main speaker will give a toast 
called the immortal memory. This is where they uh, eulogize the life of Burns, and they recite some of his poetry. Poems which I'm sure some of you are already familiar with. Like, oh my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh my love is like a melody that's sweetly played in tune. Or, to a mouse, the best laid schemes of mice and men gone half a glade. Burns was a man after my own heart. He came from a humble background, and he was a lover of nature and of traditional culture. He was a romantic, maybe too much so. And he questioned the hierarchy and the authority of the institutions that governed and restricted the life of the ordinary person. In short, he was a poet of the people. Now, my favorite part of the evening is a toast called Address to the Lassies and Reply to the Address to the Lassies. So first, a man will stand up and he will give a humorous speech on the idiosyncrasies of the opposite sex and he will mansplain why man is far superior. Now relax, because this all comes full circle with him agreeing that life would be a terrible place without women and women are indeed the fairer sex. And then, in the reply to the address to the lassies, a woman will extol the virtues of womankind whilst condemning the foibles of man. But again, this all comes full circle with the woman agreeing that the man was right for once, <laughs> and that women are, of course, the fairer sex. For those of you who don't know Scottish women, they're not exactly the shy and retiring type. Believe me. <laughs> I'm married to one. <laughs> After some dancing and some, uh, and some revelry, um, the evening always ends in the same way. Uh, it's with Burns' uh, most famous piece of work. It's a song that I'm sure you've all heard before and sung many times. It's the third most sung song in the English language. And it's this one. Old Lang Syne. It's sweet, nostalgic, and hopeful. A recent poll suggested that 60% of millennials thought this song was written by ABBA. 45% <laughs> thought maybe Snoop Dogg. But the song was penned by Burns. It's traditionally sung to close a gathering or to ring in the new year. A rough translation means of times gone by. But usually, when this is sung, people have usually had a few too many to drink. And it's usually sung with great gusto. But it's been at least a year between renditions, and it's very obvious that absolutely nobody knows the words. <laughs> Even in Scotland, 54% of people said they don't know all the words, 37% said they'll hum or mumble the tune, and 5% said they're so embarrassed that they will leave the room entirely. <laughs> well, fear not, because I'm going to teach you a verse and a chorus so you'll never have to mumble into your champagne glasses ever again. So, here are the words. Should old acquaintance be forgot, and never brought to mind. Should old acquaintance be forgot, and old lang syne. For old lang syne, my Joe, for old lang syne, will tack a cup of kindness yet for old lang syne. Quite simple, yes? <laughs> Can I ask you all to stand up, please? <laughs> this is happening. We are getting out of our comfort zones here. Do you know? People often ask me, what does a Scotsman wear under his kilt? <laughs> well, full divulgence here, I was actually born and bred on the English side of the border, but under this kilt, I'm a true Scotsman. <laughs> if you don't believe me, I'm sure you can ask these guys down here, so I'll just, I'll back up a step or two. 
So why don't we, uh, we crank up the level of uncomfort just a little? Because there's a line later on in the last verse that goes, And there's a hand, my trusty fear, and gaze a hand of thine. And so at this point, you put your right hand across to your left side, and your left hand across to your right side, and you hold the hand of the complete stranger standing next to you. Can I ask you to do that for me now, please? I love it. What other song has this much social interaction between random people? It's so delightfully un-Swiss. You ready? Okay, here we go. Should old acquaintance be forgot and ever brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and all anxiety for all anxiety, my Joe, for all anxiety, will take a cup of kindness yet for all anxiety. One more time, for all anxiety, my Joe, for all anxiety. Take a cup of kindness yet for all anxiety. Wonderful. <laughs> relax, relax, relax. Take a seat. You can all relax. Your part is over. <laughs> so, wherever in the world you may find yourself, from Beijing to Bangkok, Brussels, or right here in Basel, I invite you all to attend a burn supper and tack a cup of kindness yet. <laughs> Cheers.